WNYC Studios. Note to Self is supported by Penguin Press, publisher of Irresistible, The Rise of Addictive Technology and the Business of Keeping Us Hooked by Adam Alter. There are an estimated 280 million smartphone addicts. Are you one of them? Find out more in Irresistible. Note to Self is supported by Mozilla, the nonprofit champion for a healthy Internet and the maker of Firefox. Learn more about Internet health at mozilla.org. And then he's like, introducing Steve Miller. And everyone goes crazy. And we're like, who is he? <laughs> we don't know this old white dude. But he seems so he was nice. so cute. What a <laughs> nice man. It's Note to Self, the tech show about being human. I'm Manoush Samarodi, and today's episode is a little different than usual. It's about how digital media is changing political discourse. And no, I don't mean like the presidential candidates targeting you on Facebook with their ads. That woman at the beginning of the show was comedian Phoebe Robinson. She is one half of a new podcast called Two Dope Queens. The other half of this duo is The Daily Show's Jessica Williams. I was like, I just need a flask, like just, you know, a simple flask. Yeah. So I went on Amazon. Then I found there's a whole underworld of flasks. Um, (laughs) And you can get them in like suntan lotion form, like a shampoo bottle. And I was like, it's Two Dope Queens, so we'll just do bottles of lotion. Right. So I got a bunch of bottles of lotion. I didn't drink out of the lotion bottle. You did. Yeah, it was really embarrassing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I so was anyway, like, I'm not that black. I, I can't was in do like it. a sneaky. I, I can't do it. Phoebe and Jessica are BFFs, and they are also my new colleagues here at WNYC Studios. They also invite all different kinds of people onto their podcast, comedians who you usually won't hear from unless you absolutely go and seek them out. I was walking down Sunset late at night. An old white lady walked up to me, hugged me, and whispered in my ear, I voted for you. I was like, what, me? (laughs) Personally, or like Obama, or gay marriage, or (laughs) what exactly? I cover a lot of bases here. Okay, and see, here's where I want to lay it on you. I have a theory, specifically about women and podcasting. The very digital medium that you are listening to right now. I think that listening to female-hosted shows is actually a feminist act, whether you mean it to be or not. Let's take Note to Self, for example. When I started doing Note to Self nearly three years ago, it was this little radio segment called New Tech City, and I was pretty much covering tech like everybody else. And the everybody else were mostly guys. I would trot out the facts and my strong female reporter voice with gravitas persona. Software engineering and IT jobs are among the hardest to fill because there just aren't enough well-trained people. And the I, ugh, yeah, it is painful to listen to. But I want to tell you the rest of the story. What happened was, is the station here asked me to make my little on-air segment into a real on-demand show. And it took a while, as you loyal listeners, some of you might know, remember, But I knew that the transition from broadcast to podcast was complete when I realized, like, hey, I can be myself here. And the people who are listening, you, are choosing to be here. You don't have to be. And so I don't need to be broadcast girl. I can be a full-grown podcast woman with vulnerabilities and uncertainty and Like when Sally Field won her Oscar, for those of you who remember. You like me right now. You like me. And you know what? Thanks to you, dear listener, and all the wonderful interactive stuff that we do here together, this show has grown exponentially. More and more women are listening to it, and we have built a pretty special community. Definitely a different kind of tech show. There are lots of amazing female-led podcasts out there. And each show, like every woman, is so different. It's Serial, one story told week by week. I'm Sarah Koenig. Welcome to another round with Heaven and Tracy. The heart is Caitlin Prest. I'm Phoebe Judge. This is Criminal. I'm Krista Tippett, and this is On Being. This is Death, Sex, and Money. I'm Anna Sale. Okay, so back to the theory. 
Podcasting is giving women a special kind of platform in media to express their ideas, their perspectives, and have a place to be unfiltered, to quite literally be heard. And there's real power in that, particularly for Black women like Phoebe Robinson. I go, you know what? I'm going to not go crazy black lady i'm gonna go inner white lady customer service that's how you do it this is unacceptable (laughs) phoebe robinson welcome to wnyc and congratulations on two dope queens thank you i'm honestly like over the moon this has been such a journey i hate to use that word but jess and i started this back in september so that's now out in the world we're just so happy. You do stand up, you write for top magazines, you do all kinds of stuff. Why podcasting? You know, I, I love stand up, but I feel like a podcast is having like someone in your ear when you're like at home. It just feels so different. And to me, that's like the special thing about podcasting is like, I just really like the super intimate and like real. I feel like it's so real and so pure. And when you have this intimacy, I think it matters a lot who the voice is that you're listening to. Like if it's you guys, like, you know, two young African-American women, it's important. Yeah. And it's one of those things. uh, Jess and I always talk about this. Because we just see such a lack of diversity or like just people that we think are so funny that no one's paying attention to. And I'm like, it's not that hard to put a microphone in front of a gay man and ask his opinion on something. It's like not that hard to like talk to a trans person. It's like not that hard to talk to a lady comedian. It takes us no time to book the show. We're just like, yeah, these people are great. Why wouldn't they be on the show? And I just think society just conditions people to just ignore anything that's not the straight white male experience and to feel like this is like a a a pity hire or like we're throwing you a bone by like listening to like a black lady for 30 minutes it's like no there are tons of black ladies here so for feminism Mm -hmm. just to go back to it like what are some of the other things that you feel like need to be talked about yeah i think be discussed the thing that's cool about feminism is that it's growing and it's evolving and um You know, I think one thing that they could work on as a movement is the intersectionality of things. I think like a lot of times feminism can just represent white feminists, especially of like a particular class. You know what I mean? Like sometimes I don't always see the um, rallying behind like sex workers or like trans women, or you know, like, well, you're not really a woman. It's like, no, 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 we're all in this together. And I think we just need to broaden the definition of feminism and be more inclusive. Because mm-hmm. I think that's the only way we're going to like achieve equality is if we do that as opposed to like, well, you're not like the kind of woman I want to be. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, we don't all have to be the same. It's the same thing like with like, I'm not like Jess. Jess is not like another black person. Like there, there's layers yeah. to women, layers to black people. And so I, I think we need to recognize that more. And it's cool. Like, we don't really think of our show that way because Jess and I are just hanging out. This is like our friendship and it's just on stage. But like, there's just like a lack of representation. So when you can see someone who looks like you or sounds like you, that's very important. I think podcasting is a great way to open people's ears and also be a mirror for other people. Totally. And I have to say, like, for me... It was like when I was hardcore news girl, there was always the right answer at the end. There was always like, here's the story. There's a beginning, there's a middle and an end. And like with podcasting, I can be like, we don't know. We don't know the answer, but exploring it's super important. And I'm going to be vulnerable here and tell you, I- I'm I'm not sure where I land on this because that's life and life is messy. I think podcasting just kind of opens up this world. And it, I think it's making everyone, we're all like kind of, redoing our brains a little bit to be like oh yeah this story is also valid this life is also valid this voice is also Mm -hmm. important and so i think podcasting is like such a great tool for that i sort of feel like some of the problems with podcasting like in that it's hard to find it it's not like that easy to listen to like you have to know what to do Mm -hmm. you can't really share it it's not that much on social media like all these things that have been like allegedly problems and meant that podcasting hasn't grown quite as fast. Like we're finally hitting mainstream. Here we are. Congratulations, listeners, for being here all along. (laughs) Um, 
those have actually been really good things potentially for women Mm -hmm. in that like if you write a blog, which I know you do, there's comments. If you are on social media, people feel the need to pile in. If you are in a lot of places, you get either mansplained to or Mm -hmm. you get nasty remarks. And for some reason, like because podcasting is sort of, I don't know, it's like it's been this little like – beautiful pool with lots of lovely different colored algaes and it's been able to grow without someone stomping through it and like splashing it all over the place and ending the beautiful lives that were growing Ooh, in there. Is that, that a weird analogy? Like, no, that was so good. Thank you. But it's the same thing where it's like if you think about like the history of food and how slaves had to like cook with chitlins and then that like they were able to like create like something beautiful and awesome out of that. So I think that's kind of like yeah. with podcasting where it's like, all right, you guys are going to like be dudes. And then you like will turn over and look and be like, oh, that's really cool. And it's like, yeah, we've been here the whole time. Mm-hmm. I know that's kind of scary to say in 2016, but I really do think people are really learning how to see women mm-hmm. in a way that they haven't before. Phoebe Robinson. Thanks, guys. Phoebe Robinson and her BFF Jessica Williams have a new show from WNYC Studios called Two Dope Queens. It's a little racy, not for the little ones. Make it your own adult pleasure. Please go check it out on iTunes or the WNYC app or wherever you listen to podcasts. And tell us if you have a great podcast to recommend that features people who don't usually get heard on the usual media outlets. Email us at note to self at WNYC.org or hit us up on Facebook or Twitter. We will compile your suggestions for our weekly newsletter where actually we often make podcast recommendations, but we'll, we'll do a little special thing. Have you read the newsletter, by the way? It's pretty hilarious. You should subscribe if you don't already. You can find it at notetoselfradio.org. And hey, I feel like I need to give you a very special shout out this week, listener. Yeah, you. By listening to the show, you have just committed a feminist act. Shocking, I know. But really, you being here has a bigger effect than you might know. So thank you for real. Jeez, we got to end this because I'm going to like tear up or something. Okay, the Note to Self team this week, Jen Poyant, Jenna Cagle, and Joe Plord. Special thanks to Seth Kelly for his wonderful help this week. Special thanks also to Phoebe Robinson for being here. Note to Self is a production of WNYC Studios. I am Manoush Samarodi. White women have the power of tears. You guys cry and get whatever the fuck you want. Dope! So dope. Don't run from that shit. Every time I tell that joke, there's a white woman in the audience with a stiff face like her, like, mm, and there's a white guy next to her, like, yeah, they cry. Because they do.